Imagine a banquet like no other. A spread of delicious food, some of your favorites, combinations you've only dreamed of. But when you go back for seconds, it starts to taste a bit weird. You power through because you're hungry and everything looks delicious, but then you realize some of the ingredients aren't even cooked. On a completely unrelated note, have you heard of Exoprimal? As much as top hits like Fortnite or Genshin Impact might make the live service industry seem like an easy cash cow to any aspiring corporation, quite a few steps come after the already expensive and time-consuming make the game part of development. Once it's live, you gotta pay for monthly server costs, minor balance changes, major updates and new seasons, collaborations, cosmetics, multi-console support, writers and artists for new events, repeated marketing and like a million other things. And to pay for them all, you need a lot of players to buy the full priced game and or start maxing out mom's credit card for microtransactions. The game also needs to be incredibly replayable. Basically, shit ain't easy. And there's a reason why a lot of these games go under the radar or wind up in an all too early grave, despite the creativity and joy they can often bring to their dedicated player bases. The last time I made a video on a weird game that tried some something new, it was about Rumbleverse, which got canned before I could even finish the script. I had to change like 10 pages of writing from present to past tense. But while my opinions on why Rumbleverse died concerned aesthetic and gameplay features that felt essential to the overall experience, Exoprimal is a bit more complicated. Sure, the game's not dead by a long shot, and Capcom has plenty of resources to give it a fighting chance, but chances are you haven't really heard much about it. It. I mean, in a year of huge release after huge release, no one would blame you for missing the wonky PvEVP dinosaur game. After releasing in July of 2023 to very mixed reviews, Exoprimal didn't exactly find major traction or manage to make a name for itself in this massively oversaturated space. Live service or not, a middling Metacritic score of 67 and a harsh user score of 4 doesn't exactly inspire confidence. While I usually talk about single player and indie games on this channel, I have an obsessive love for multiplayer. I've spent more time playing Fortnite with my friends in the past few months than I have playing those life-changing experiences I like to prattle on about, and I'll play the shittiest game imaginable if it has co-op. So anyway, a few months ago, a couple friends and I decided to check out this weird dinosaur game we had all kinda maybe heard about. And now here I am, talking about it. There's a lot I really like about Exoprimal, including several features that feel incredibly unique to the online multiplayer space, but it also comes with a laundry list of awkward design choices that I think really hurt its chances of a successful launch, and make the current experience a bit of a hard sell in the already exhausting and time-consuming world of live service. All right. Here's how Exoprimal works. You select an exosuit from whichever role suits your fancy before the match begins, but you can also switch mid-match, even while you're still alive. Assault's got your typical mix of explosives, rifles, melee, and snipers. As for tanks, Murasame is more aggressive and can counter attacks, while Krieger and Roadblock use shields. The three healers also play very differently. Skywave can float in midair and launch black holes, Witch Doctor can place group heals while stunning hordes of dinosaurs, and Nimbus can swap between damage and healing on its primary weapon. While the cast of 10 exosuits might seem a bit small, Exoprimal opts for variants to expand the roster. Currently, there are alpha variants of each exosuit as separately unlockable characters, with minor changes like turning Roadblock's holdable shield into one you can place down, or trading out Nimbus's pistols for shotguns. Once you queue up and enter a match, you're met by your best buddy Leviathan, an insane AI hellbent on forcing you into combat tests against hordes of dinosaurs. Exo fighters, welcome to the war game. I am the advanced artificial intelligence Leviathan. Two teams of five then start the match in a PvE Dinosaur Cull, a set of mini-missions where you have to kill a specified number of dinosaurs as they spawn in waves. The goal of this section is to beat the enemy team to the second part of the match, which is either another PvE race or a PvP objective like Payload or Capture Point. 
where there are also dinosaurs, of course. During the second section of a match, one player on each team can also summon a dominator to attack the enemy team as a big dinosaur. I like playing as the big dinosaur. But that's about it. Not a lot of variety. Couple maps, couple variations of dino spawns. You know, I could kind of see why so many reviews said it was shallow. But, uh, guess I'll play it for a few more hours, just to be sure. Wait, what the fuck just happened? That was awesome! Alright, so here's the big twist. The big, cool, yet questionable design decision of Exoprimal. You unlock more of the game as you play and progress the story. For PvP, this is kinda unheard of, and trying to create a single-player progression in this space is an incredibly bold move. Like, imagine playing Overwatch, but for your first five hours you can only play Payload on two maps. And then, imagine if the game literally didn't tell you how many game modes or maps there were. It's easy to assume that Exoprimal's start is all it is, since that's basically how every other multiplayer game operates. This unique progression system really sets the game apart from other live service titles, but its lack of clarity is a huge drawback for new players. While your first matches will be primarily payload or PvE dinosaur culls, more modes and features get added as you progress. You'll start out killing regular raptors and carnotauruses, but later you'll fight off thousands of them World War Z style as they pour out of black holes, or fight mutated dinosaurs like snipers and stealth neosaurs. Eventually, you even unlock special 10-man raids, putting the two teams together in a special combat arena to fight insane waves of dinosaurs and MMO-esque bosses, which is insanely cool, but it takes a bit to really start showing its hand. Plus, the game doesn't reveal any of this to you at first. If you don't stick with Exoprimal for over 5 hours or so, it seems like an incredibly shallow and repetitive experience. Nowhere in the game does it tell you that more modes will be unlocked with story progression. All you can see from the home screen is how close you are to the next cutscene. The other interesting aspect of this design is how the story is woven into every part of the game, from the main menu, to the mission unlocks, to the missions themselves. In the hub menus, characters will react to recent story cutscenes with unique lines of dialogue or even change appearance based on a few specific events, which is a really cute detail. Every big raid mission ties into the game's overarching story, with cutscenes integrated into the missions themselves that make them feel like you're playing out a little single-player adventure. I think this system is really neat. Multiplayer storytelling is usually boiled down to disconnected lore, stories and animations outside of the game, with a handful of character voice lines hinting at whatever's supposed to be going on in the world you're playing in. But Exoprimal looked at its hand, saw the 7 and the 2, and said, fuck it, we're going all in. <laughs> It's campy and goofy and over the top, but for a game about time travel and dinosaurs, it works! If there's one aspect of this game that I don't have a critique for, it's Leviathan. Effective battle noted. Well done. You really put the eye in strivificationality. Announcers are often the unsung heroes of multiplayer games, especially when their voice lines are heard much more frequently than any other characters. The most memorable announcers don't just relay important information, they can exert their own personalities and help flesh out a game's aesthetic. Skip Legger Day in Rumbleverse is my favorite example of this, but I gotta say, Exoprimal's deranged AI meets cheesy corporate spokesperson definitely deserves more attention. On Bikitoa, we're heading Bikitua, brighter tomorrow. He's got pun-filled compliments for your performance in previous matches, lore tidbits and gameplay advice to drop while you're running around each map, and plenty of encouraging lines for all Exo Fighters. The stream of raptors pouring across the dam is reminiscent of the thunderous cascade of the famed Niagara Falls. Fun fact, there is no escaping the dinosaur tide. Mark Witten and the writers knocked it out of the park here, as this snarky character really serves as the glue that brings this whole bizarre gameplay story mix together. 
However, the experience definitely isn't flawless. If you're playing with friends, mission complexity is locked to the player with the lowest progression, since it wouldn't make sense to bring people into story missions they don't have context for. If you're playing Exoprimal by yourself or with the same group, this shouldn't be a problem, and I assume the progression speed is decent, but as I introduced multiple new friends to the game, I got a little tired of repeatedly playing the early missions while also not getting to progress my own story cutscenes. Now, if problems only stemmed from playing with friends, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but nothing is ever that simple when it comes to Exoprimal. Because the wider variety of missions are unlocked as you progress the game, if you get placed with even one new player on your team or the enemies, which is completely out of your control, it doesn't matter if you've already beaten the game, you are forced into an earlier mission. Certain maps or mission types showing up a bit more than others wouldn't be that big of an issue if there wasn't a considerable difference in difficulty. Well after rolling credits, my general experience still varies greatly. One night, I queued into the beginner payload match where I can kill the dinosaurs with my eyes closed three times in a row, and the next night, I was playing with high-level players on new map variants with dino spawns that were much more engaging. I've heard there's a lava map, and I've seen it in the trailer, but I still haven't played on it. This is also where player count, or lack thereof, comes into play. If there were plenty of new players at all times to onboard together, veteran players would be able to play the more difficult missions much more consistently. But instead, when you queue up for a quick match, who knows what you're in for? Could be a fun capture point sesh, or a purely co-op raid, or it could be, a uh, the Magnum mission. There's this one story mission, second half PvP by the way, that has both an unskippable cutscene and several moments where nothing happens as you wait for Magnum to walk around the map. It is so boring that I consistently see players dodge as soon as they notice which one it is. Oh yeah, no lever penalty by the way. Where's our team? What? Where's my team? Transfer. We Are got three bots! Three bots? <laughs> three bots? Now that the basics are out of the way, it's time for me to start going critical analytical mode on the gameplay. Critical and Oh, that rhymes. To be clear, I have no issues with the cosmetics in this game as they're pretty standard for a premium title. Loot boxes that drop every account level like the original Overwatch, skins that can be purchased with grindable currency, and battle passes. Whatever. The real problem lies with the gameplay progression of this full-priced AAA release. If the only piece of the puzzle I showed you was the progression system, you might think Exoprimal is either a PvE-only game like Deep Rock, or a completely free-to-play title looking to goad players into a spend-money-to-skip-the-grind type deal. But instead? It's just fucking weird. Despite being a PvP game, Exoprimal has permanent progression unlocks. Every exosuit can equip three modules to improve their abilities in combat. Basic modules are unlocked by increasing your account level, but suit-specific modules are unlocked by increasing your level on that exosuit. The coins required to buy and upgrade these are pretty easy to come by, so you won't really have an issue there, but they're also the same coins used to buy cosmetics. The shitty part about this system is that it doesn't feel related to monetization. While you can pay to unlock alpha exosuits early, you can't buy coins or experience boosts. You still have to level the suits by playing to make them stronger. Most PvP games don't include this type of progression unless they're evil demon mobile games because it can create an uneven playing field, with certain exosuits feeling very underpowered until you unlock their key modules. These can be huge benefits, I'm talking larger ammo reserves, self-healing, additional ability charges, and so on. I just don't fucking get it. It can already be discouraging to play a character you aren't familiar with in a PvP game, but exosuits 
being inherently weaker until you level them up dissuades you from trying new playstyles. And this is only worsened by the fact that player level, exosuit level, and battle pass XP are heavily impacted by both how you perform as an individual and the outcome of the overall match, with a win netting you a 50% experience bonus. It's not like it takes an eternity to get the key unlocks you need for an exosuit, it probably takes a few hours, but that really adds up across the cast and just feels bad. And speaking of the exosuits themselves, you can't even view their abilities from the main menu. Why? Why can you literally only learn what your new character's moves are when you hold down a button during the match? I want to love this game so bad, I really do. When a black hole opens up in the sky and thousands of raptors pour out of it, I'm like, Holy shit, this is the coolest thing ever! Incorporating a consistent threat for both teams can create really unique gameplay situations, like needing to divide your effort between defending from hordes while pushing up against enemy players, but full PvP matches feel like an afterthought. In general, while Exoprimal attempts to blend a lot of ideas, it's not like there's inherently too much. It's more of a failure in execution, with the PvE being the weakest section of the game. One of the main missions in PvE is named Dinosaur Survival, but it's almost never difficult enough to be exciting or engaging, and mindless, brain-off gameplay isn't really what players are looking to get out of a PvP experience. There are a small handful of interesting missions, like the Vortexer Sabotage, where you have to destroy a piece of machinery sitting on top of a small plane floating over the edge of the map with a T-Rex on top of it, or when the game spawns so many dinosaurs in such a tiny area that it becomes less about the race and more about trying to fucking survive, but in that case, the 10-man raids and savage gauntlets feel more suited to cooperative survival. The game will throw crazy challenges and really cool set pieces at you, but sometimes they don't even happen because of the race against the other team. Here's a clip of me playing a variant of area defense for the first time, a mission type that is near impossible to make a comeback in thanks to the fact that it's based on time. We reach the final point, a black hole opens, and hundreds of pteranodons fly out into the sky. Holy shit, they're gonna swarm us, this is gonna be crazy! Uh, just kidding, the enemy team just won the game and the match is now over. We didn't even get to do the cool dinosaur fight! This is the other main problem with pure PvE missions. Without getting to interact with enemy players and turn the tide of battle, winning feels pretty out of your control outside of the Dominator, which only one player can use. If you fall behind, you basically just have to hope the enemy team fucks up or it's game over. And if that wasn't bad enough on its own, every time you are even a second behind the other team on a mission, your old pal Leviathan is there to kick another pile of dirt in your face. You are are completing objectives slower than the enemy team. But honestly, it's so fun to see a game actively dunk on its players that I would never hate him for it. The lack of depth or control during matches isn't completely remedied in PvP either. After clearing the boring dinosaur culls, you're greeted by mode designs and map layouts that just feel messy. You often don't get to interact with the enemy team until the final stretch of payload or the final phase of hammer delivery, which leads to a strong snowball effect. If you can get a few good kills or wipe the enemy team once, you basically win the match, especially because the PvP segment only lasts about 4-5 to five minutes. It's such a confusing decision, because on some levels, they're close to having a great game. When I'm coordinating an organized assault on a capture point or getting some sick kills in energy capture or payload, Exoprimal is a fun hero shooter, but these moments don't last long enough. I'm just now realizing that I've repeatedly said Exoprimal has payload instead of fully explaining it as payload race, which is an important distinction to make because it's not very good.
If you want to push at the max speed, you need three people on the payload. If the maps were designed better, there could be an ebb and flow of combat as the payloads leave cover or drive alongside each other. But since they only meet at the end, two people can go risk it to fight the other team if they want, while the other three are stuck with more dinosaur duty. I really wish Exoprimal would have fleshed out its unique PvP opportunities instead of having two thirds of the match focus on gaining a slight advantage, because it's much more engaging to work as a team against enemy players and and the dinosaur threat simultaneously. It would make learning the maps feel more important, and make choosing your characters and modules based on the map and game mode more integral to success. Like if it was just Overwatch, but a T-Rex shows up and beats the shit out of both teams, that'd be pretty cool. The mode introduced in Season 2 really emphasizes the issue with match structure. Escape puts all 10 players on the same team, tasking them with capturing 6 points around the map to earn stat boosts before surviving an insane onslaught of dinosaurs during the escape countdown. It's fun, but instead of being its own game mode, it's the back half of a regular PvE match, meaning you have to play Dinosaur Cull against the other team, which literally serves no purpose once you're put together. Now, after I've said all this, you might go, oh, I'll just queue PvP then. But in addition to PvE matches being required to progress the story and unlock more content, you get a 20% XP boost by queuing random. Also, you can't specifically queue for any type of content, including raids or 10-man co-op. After you unlock them while progressing the story, it's a crapshoot on whether or not you'll fight the epic Neo T-Rex again, or fall asleep playing the little baby dinosaur coals from the early tutorial missions. I'm about to talk about one of my favorite parts of the game and I can't even lead into it positively. <laughs> Alright, I'm sorry Exoprimal, I'm gonna be nice to you now and talk about raids. Because they are integrated into the regular mission queue, they're a complete surprise when they do happen, which makes the initial playthrough of Exoprimal unlike anything I've seen in a PvP game before. You get dropped in what looks like a normal dinosaur cull before being interrupted as Leviathan initiates a special combat test, throwing all 10 players on the same team and summoning insane waves of dinosaurs with moving walls and floors, or unique bosses with MMO raid-esque attacks and hazards. These are super fun, and will definitely be the highlight for most casual players. The Neo T-Rex forces you to hide behind walls or jump between platforms to avoid a rising poison floor, Durbin fires waves of lasers you have to weave through, and targeted airstrikes that keep you constantly moving and dodging the paths of other players, and the final mission makes everyone work together in a cheesy battle that feels straight out of an anime RPG. However, there aren't exactly a lot of them, and their repeated usage as endgame content feels pretty underwhelming. Once you beat the game, you unlock the Savage Gauntlet, a difficult mission that rotates every week, but for some fucking reason, is only available on weekends. Sorry babe, can't do dinner on Saturday, new trial just dropped. In theory, it's not a horrible idea to have limited rotating modes and content, but that's if you're like, Fortnite, and you're patching guns and maps and modes just about every week, but there's not enough content in Exoprimal to warrant the live service route. The Savage Gauntlet could be a great source of challenging endgame content to keep players interested, with leaderboards encouraging them to design specialized team comps and continue competing for the fastest times, but instead, it's just a random mission once every weekend that is either a slightly beefed up boss raid or more difficult PvE mission with PvP removed, and a profile medal for landing in the top 50 or 20%. Basically, as you play through the main experience for 20-ish hours, Exoprimal is a beautiful onslaught of unique dinosaur raids and crazy set pieces with some nibbles of challenge and engaging PvP combat, and I have no real issue recommending that. But if you try to hop back in after rolling credits, you start to notice the cracks. This game doesn't have nearly as much nuance to positioning, learning maps, or mastering characters as most of its contemporaries, and if you want players to stay interested in a PvP game for extended periods of time, that is a big piece of the puzzle. 
And because the PvP is lacking, you turn to the raids. But again, there's not nearly enough customization, difficulty, or overall content for this to be a deep PvE experience when games like Destiny, Final Fantasy XIV, and Deep Rock Galactic already exist. Considering I probably won't revisit this game until it gets more content in the future, it didn't exactly hook me for the long run. I think Exoprimal is an interesting case study of sorts when it comes to the immediate distaste and negativity towards live service multiplayer, in part due to over a decade of greedy corporate decisions and an absolute flood of infinitely replayable games into the market. It's understandable that people weren't willing to find out what Exoprimal really is. I'm sure the average gamer was more than happy to dismiss it as another failed cash grab, let alone play it for more than a few hours to find the nuggets of gold hidden beneath the simplistic gameplay loop. Exoprimal, I give it a 0 out of 10, trying to make me sign into a Capcom ID on a secondary device in order to play. Fuck them, 0 out of 10, just like Overwatch. Exo Primal's a piece of shit. So after all these complaints and critiques, you're probably thinking, so why did you dedicate an entire video to a mediocre live service game? And to that I say, good... That's a good question. <laughs> Sure, I wanted to complain about all the features that frustrate me, but I don't think that's an interesting enough angle for a whole video. It's because, like most games, it's clear that a lot of very passionate people put a lot of hours into making a really unique experience here. However, it turns out that making an online multiplayer game with seasons and content updates and battle passes requires lots of finesse and active developers, and unless you've got a perfected gameplay loop and money to burn, it's a huge risk. A lot of people understandably didn't vibe with a subpar experience from Capcom, a company known for highly polished franchises like Resident Evil, Devil May Cry, Monster Hunter, and Street Fighter. To be clear, this isn't a Rumbleverse situation. I'm not looking to make you feel bad for not checking out Exoprimal with a million other amazing games already in your backlog, but there is just something about it, in its cheesy, self-indulgent, disappointing glory that lands me here at the end of an entire video, instead of one where I say that Mario Wonder was really fun or something. Which I mean, it it was. It's easy for me to frame Exoprimal as a game nobody played when it struggles to crest 100 concurrent players on Steam, but Capcom has reported an increase in players and profits thanks to its partnership with Game Pass, and I think the recent recent Street Fighter editions and upcoming Monster Hunter collab will help give it some needed publicity. However, while I do hope this game can eventually be remembered as a success, a T-Rex probably has a better chance at reaching for the live service spotlight. Because T-Rexes, you know, they have like, their arms are like the small... It's a di you know, it's a, it's a dinosaur joke, you wouldn't get- you wouldn't get- At the end of the day, this game is gonna get shut down. But regardless of if that's in a few months or a few years, that reality sucks because Exoprimal is interesting. But since it can only exist as a bizarre live service PvEVP experience, that means you have to play it now while it's happening before it's too late. And the reality of that situation is that most people won't experience it. There's far too many games demanding an infinite amount of our time and money to be able to catch a glimpse of these weird experiences before they disappear. Exoprimal may not be what a live service game needs to be, but do I need to sink a thousand hours into a game for it to be worth checking out? No, nor do I really want to put that much time into every online game I pick up. I don't love it, I'm not ready to go die on a hill for it, and at $60 retail, it's a bit of a hard sell, but I like games that take risks and do weird shit, and that's why I'm talking about it. Every time a thousand raptors poured out of a giant portal on the bridge and I stood there blocking them with a giant shield or mowing them down with explosives, every time I stood around with a bunch of other players doing glow stick dances before a raid, every time I cheered with my friends as we clutched out the end of a close PvP match, it was really fun. I don't know, man. You can turn into a tornado and then the, the dinosaurs get sucked up in the tornado and and then you're a dinosaur tornado. So if anyone ever asks why I played Exoprimal, 
I mean, have you heard the vocal theme? Like, holy shit!